generally, if you go twice the length of the side wall, plus a little bit, should be enough. So generally, I measure that out using my hands, and then I just cut two at a time. Burn the end of those a little bit. Basic stringers toolkit, pair of scissors, screwdriver, pocket knife, and a lighter. Now when you when you melt the ends, it's important to pull as you melt. And that'll give you a nice pointy space. That'll help later on when you're trying to string through small holes or tight knots. If you've got a big wob of plastic on the end, it's not going to be able to string through any of the smaller holes. There you go. Alright, now some guys prefer starting with the top string. Um, I like to lock off the corners as best I can. Now, the higher you put these corners to the top, the more you're going to have a pocket at the top of your stick. The tighter you pull them down the side, the more of a channel you're going to create. Okay? So if you want more of a channel, you want to pull these as tight as you can. Generally, with a warrior head that has no hole in the middle, okay, I'll try and go two holes on the top. So two, four, six, eight, ten, and I'll try and stretch these out as much as I can. Okay, so those top two holes in the middle are going to get pulled tight across. So pick your two corners. For this warrior head, it's an Evo, it's pretty spaced out. We're going to start down here and that's going to give us a really serious channel. You guys said you guys know how to tie the lock knots, right? Generally, I don't get too fancy, just one double knot. Gives you a nice big knot to anchor with. Okay, Start on the outside and I go twice through. Once and twice. Pull that outside knot nice and tight and then follow it up. Okay? The idea is you want it nice and snug to the plastic. Same thing on the opposite side. Double knot to start. Wait, can you slow the use the slow motion? <laughs> A loop once, okay, and through, uh -huh. and again. One more. Okay. And then you're just gonna pull it nice and tight. Keep the knot close to the end. You need a fingertip so you can get it untied if you need to, but push your knot towards the end. Again, from the outside. So I'm gonna go from the outside, up and through, back from the outside. And just weave it through again. Make it nice and tight. Okay. Now that I've got those locked off, okay, I can do my top string if I want to. Now your top string, people go a lot of different ways. Um, because we play on turf here a lot, this regular stuff can wear out pretty quickly. Um, I found a glove string. It usually works pretty good, and I know I've got one here. Uh, this is a, a tougher nylon, it's a shoelace, I pulled out a pair of warrior cleats. Um, anything you can find that's a little bit thicker, it's going to wear a little bit longer, is good for the top string, so you don't get a lot of fray across the top. Now if I can, and i got enough space, I'll start in the same hole, exact same space. Pull it nice and tight. Okay. Now, it's important to do your spacing properly, and this is something that will take a while. You want even from both sides. So you're going to have to line up your holes and decide where you want to use it. Now, it's going to bunch, okay? So I can either pull tight towards the middle, and I have a little bit of loose in the middle, or I can pull tight towards the outside, and I have a little loose on the corners. Everybody's got their own preference. There's lots of ways to do it. Uh, for this one, I'm going to go with a double lock, okay? It's just kind of not here. Now the reason I'm doing that is because my big hole lines up exactly on a knot. Okay, 
So to do that when you go down from the outside and up. Okay, now the key here, make sure you hold your holes nice and tight. Sorry. This around, going down from the outside, and then I'm coming back on the same side I was before. So I come back from where I was. Okay, now what that means is the string coming up should be over the top. If you look on this example, right? You can see how the string's always on the top. You guys are switching off here? It's fine, you'll be able to edit it later. Everyone's got iMovie. See how the knot is always on the top of that? That's what we want again. So we go up and then we go down. You have to reverse the knot, okay? It's the same knot twice, but once forward and once backwards. Pull it nice and tight on both sides. And end up with a nice tight knot, okay? Do the same thing over here. One, two, three, four, five. That's my middle knot. So I'm going to try and snug this part into this hole. Down from the outside and up. And then reverse it. Okay. Keep it nice and tight. You may find you get to the end of a stick once in a while and you just don't have enough top string to go around. So that's okay. You can always restart. Find a longer string. Okay? nice part about this one, it's the same knot over and over again. Okay, easy to know if you did it right because you have the knot on the outside. Okay, last one. Now getting down to your last knot, you're not going to have a lot of room left, okay? So follow back the same way you did before, it goes down the same hole. Flip the stick over, you can find some space on the inside to push it through. I don't know if you can see that on the camera. Pull that through nice and tight, okay? Now there isn't much left, but this knot doesn't have to be especially tight. You may have to fight with it a little bit. Pinch your stick down, oh, I cut myself. Oh. So you can always go back, just tighten your knots one at a time, mm. right? A little bit of wiggle pulling in the right direction, and you may end up with enough to finish off what you didn't quite have. It's okay to do it loose once, make sure you have enough room, and then go back and do a little bit more. Serious. If you string sticks long enough, you will cut yourself. Alright, this is pretty tight. I might have to go back and get a little bit more. Yeah, what was it? Uh, what do you want to do? Oh, hold on. A bit of patience. There we go. Nice and tight across the top. Okay, but it still works pretty good. Right, is there a ball nearby? Okay. Now the next part is where I think you guys are most interested. And that's determining the shape of the pocket depending on the spacing. So my next hole, you can see here, is bunched. Right? Now most guys will string it where it's closest. That makes it nice and loose. Now if I do that, you can see there's a lot of play. There's a lot of space. So you're going to get a high pocket and probably a lot more width. 
Mm. Now it depends on how you do the rest of the sidewall, but you guys have to play with the balance on this. All of my sticks start off tight and get a little bit looser. It creates a slightly lower pocket and I get a lot of hold without too much whip, mm. right? Now, because of the warrior sticks, big spaces, right, you may get some lumpiness in your stick. If you hand me that uh, helix right there, okay? You can see in this pocket where you've gone tight and then the next one's loose. So this transition from tight to loose creates this sort of wrinkle here, right? And when, uh, when you talk about not being able to feel the ball, mm -hmm. that's this, this translation here. It's a little bit of physics. So what I like to do is pull the first one as tight as I can get it, right? Now, this hole is going to be okay. This hole is going to be better, okay? But I think given how tight this is, we're just going to do the first one, and we'll see how it looks. So I, I like to go from the outside, right? And if I'm trying to keep the sidewall tight, I want to do a locking knot exactly the same as I did on the top string, okay? And what this does is, when I pull this tight, it's going to pull that loop down. You can see how it locks? Now if I don't lock it, if I just do a normal sidewall knot, that's still going to be loose. Okay? I'm going to get up with uneven spacing. So pull that tight. Okay? And then same thing on the next one. Go down first, right? And then come back up through the hole, and that gives you a bit of a lock. A little clumsy with my fingers. Okay? Again, pull it tight, hold it with your thumb, pull it tight. Okay? Now I think on this Evo, it's probably good to go one more lock. There we go. You can already start to see that tightness in there, like a tennis racket. Okay? Now, because I've been pulling tighter and tighter and tighter, you can see that my next hole is already on top of the hole where I am now, okay? So now I like to switch the type of knot I'm doing. I like to go down from the top, okay? And then down on the next one as well, okay? Now this is gonna give me my pocket shape. Where I stop locking is where my pocket starts. So I'm gonna go down on both of those, and when I come up from the next hole, I'm not gonna lock that off, okay? If I lock it now, I'm going to get this awkward loose piece, and I don't want that, so no locking. And now I'm just going to double up the same all the way down the stick, twice around the outside, okay? As I pull it tight, it'll switch the flex into the mesh, and then I lock it off again, okay? Keep it nice and tight, and you can pull this tight because the mesh is going to slide a little bit, okay? And that's perfectly okay. So again. Twice through the sidewall, once, twice, and once. Nice and tight. Uh, there we go. And now for the end of this one, I'm going to go twice again. That's been the pattern so far, but we may have to adjust this at the end. When we finish up, we may find the pockets too deep. Take a little. Okay, perfect. And because I used a nice thick sidewall string, just one knot is enough, okay? Now, if I just hold the end down, right, you can already see the shape of the pocket, right? It's low, but it's nice and smooth at the top. No whip. It means you're going to be able to control your shot with your shooting strings. You get a lot more flexibility in your pocket. Now, the trick is just doing the other side exactly the same way, okay? You're reversing your angle. I generally hold my stick in the same position. Some guys switch, do what you're comfortable with. Go down, double check, we left one hole. We'll do the same thing on the other side. Back up through the same place. Okay, pull it nice and tight. Okay. Why? Question? I don't know. Nothing, just <laughs> cell phone. Okay. Lock, lock. Now remember, we locked three. One lock, two lock, three lock. Do the same thing on the other side. Good. And just like the other side, my next hole is on top of my knot. 
and that's when I switch up styles. Down from the outside, once, twice, okay, get a good look at it here. They're going down from the outside. There's no real difference if I go up and over or down and through, but it's a preference thing. Every guy's got their own. Pull that nice and tight. Down, down, and a knot. Once, twice, and a knot. Once, twice. Just double check what you did on the other side. There's two tie-off holes. I went through the first one. I'm going to do the same thing again here from the inside out. All right. Now you've got the basic shape of your pocket already. Okay. You can see when I punch it out, it's nice and smooth. All right. There's a nice smooth curve to it. There's not much of a channel. If you look from the top, you can see a bit of a V here. Okay but it's not a really drastic one like some guys have. Okay, that's partly the shape of the head, partly the way we strung it, right? But if we stick a ball in there, it's gonna roll nice and smooth, right up the middle, and it wants to sit just a little bit low, okay? This is an American style pocket right now, okay? It's good for two Vs and a top shooter, right? It's gonna carry the ball low, good for a midi probably. All right, we need a little something, something to tie off the bottom. Generally, when I tie it off the bottom, I just take any piece of any piece of scrap. I have anything that's not too long, nothing that I would be able to use again. This is a pretty good one. Put a little color on it. Again, there's a lot of ways to tie off the bottom of your stick. Um, this is obviously a scrap from a shooting string. And for the purpose of this one, it's nice and flat at the bottom. I'm just gonna go in and through once. Now here's, you're gonna have to struggle to pinch that through a little bit. Small fingers make it easier. Once through, and I think for this stick, I'm just gonna pinch from the sides. Now there's a lot of ways to do the bottom of the stick, and they're all gonna produce different stuff. The tighter I tie the middle, you can see it creates this flat piece makes the ball want to stay higher, but it gives a lot of flap down here. If I pinch in the outsides, it's going to give me a pocket for the ball to sit in. So generally what I do is pinch it about halfway, flip it over, and I just count the number of holes from the outside. One, two, three, I'm going to grab that. One, two, three, and I'll grab there. So just a quick in and out. Same thing on the other side. Once you go through, make sure that you're on the same line. Okay? That's one, two, three from the top, and that is one, two, three. So we're good. Back through the other way. Just get your hand in there. Let yourself feel it. That'll let you know how tight you want to make it. You know, the bottom is not going to make much of a difference to how deep your pocket is. It'll make a difference to how low the ball comes and how much swing you have, but it, it's really the sidewalls that determine how deep your pocket is. So I'm just going to tie this off with another double knot. Not too tight because we want to be able to get in there later. It's just enough to hold the back of your pocket together. There we go. Got a nice, uh, nice little stick, and it's pretty close to being illegal. It's a big pocket, <laughs> but it looks pretty good. There you go. Pass that around, have a look at it, share it. You can turn that off for a second. Yeah. Here. So no nylon, eh? We'll just do a... Uh... You do a V, V shape. Mm -hmm. Channel, V shape. Oh, okay. Can we have a different setup? You guys call them a U. Oh, from Team Skyers. Oh, thank you. Those are not the girl balls. Grab your guys. I don't have to be, uh, not to be weird. <laughs>
Cheers, buddy. <laughs> All right. You ready for that thing? Oh, okay. Yeah? All right, when you're stringing your V, okay, there's a couple of different ways to do it. You want to look at your channel. I don't know if that's clear on the video right now, but from here, you should be able to see a very obvious pattern where the V wants to go, okay? Now, generally, you're going to put a shooter across the top, and right where this channel starts to end, you want to have your next shooting string. That's where the real snap and power of your shot comes from. The V is there for hold, all right? It's to create the feel of a deeper pocket when you're not actually using a deep pocket. So you want that to focus a little bit further down. On this stick, the way it's looking from here, I want my V to come to a point right around here, okay? You gotta follow the middle line of the stick and follow your shooting line back and start your V as low as you can, okay? Um, I always do twisty Vs, I know other guys have different preferences, but you're just gonna get under a knot on your sidewall, just like that. And then you're going to start going back and forth. Now, I, generally I string my sticks with a shaft on them. I'll hold it between my legs and I can work two-handed. All right, no shaft on the stick is going to make that a little tougher. But, I'm just going to follow the line up. You're not going to be able to see that from where you are. I'm not. I assume uh... nice and gentle both ways. You don't have to tug too hard, just enough to make sure that they're balanced. Okay, now double check your top line, okay? I like to go all the way to the center, so it's a perfect balance. Some guys like to skip across one knot, depending on how much shooting string you might be forced into one way or the other. Keep the same pattern of over and under all the way across the stick. Now you do need an extra long shooting string for a, a V. I didn't double check this one, so we may be redoing this. But you'll edit that and I won't feel like you need it. All right, now down at the end, I got one side longer than the other. So I got to track back, it's gonna happen to a lot of guys. You just loosen it, go in one direction. Bring it all the way back. Tighten it, going the other way. If you're looking for a place to buy good shooting strings in Hong Kong, the uh, ice rink at Mega Box has good stuff. Or you can just come to me. Or you can talk to my man, Bill Grider. We have these uh, sets that we're selling these days. <laughs> <laughs> Pre-made sets. Okay. Now, to know if you've got it tight enough, okay, again, it's a matter of personal preference, but this one, when I put my hand in and run it back and forth, I can barely feel any pressure from the string. Okay, that lets no, know it's not doing its job. Right now it's just for show. So I'm gonna go back and tighten it just a little. You don't have to pull too much, but it should be just enough that when you run your hand back and forth in your stick, you can feel a little tension. And that should be true whether you've got your top shooters in or not. My man's sitting here checking his homework. He's like, yeah. Just enough so you can feel the touch, right? It's not much, but it's enough to hold the ball in place when you're running full speed. Now, with a V, you might not get two knots in it, but squeeze it as much as you can. I think Daddy's getting a new one today, too. Daddy's gonna put a new one in today, too. Good. I think everybody should be putting new pockets in every weekend. Oh shit, huh? I think you should string your stick less often than you shower, but not by much. I like these ones a lot, dude. Black and white ones. Those are sweet. Are you like seven? Is this, are you this type of guy, or are you the... This type of guy, just plain? 
Okay. Plain. Or yellow, right? The yellow looks good. Always on white. Yeah, I want to get me some lime green type stuff. Oh, lime looks good too. Right. It's outside now, but it looks good. Hmm. You find an extra shaft, we can put this on and go test it out. They've got, they've got a net on the roof. Really? There's a cage outside. <laughs> it's because you started to go shooting gallery. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Two of these right. beers. Based on the spacing here, probably want to go with what I would do is go shooter, shooter, nylon up high. Okay? Different guys are going to do it different ways. It's all about preference. Uh, but let's talk about some of the basics of how you do your shooters. Uh, when you have a bunch of leftover shooting strings, you want to start with your longest ones, work your way up to the shorter ones as you move up top. Top of the stick is going to require less string. Um, for a stick like this, I'm going to go with a twisty shooter instead of a wrap around. Okay? I'm also going to use the sidewall string and not the sidewall plastic. Mm -hmm. If you've strung your stick really tight on the sidewall, you can put your shooters on the sidewall string. All right, and as your stick changes, it'll change together. If you want a little more grip and a little more rip, you want to put them right on the plastic, which is what I do. That's why you've got so many assists. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so I just found a nice hole, right? I've chosen a hole that was locked off. See, it's locked. I've gone under the sidewall, and I'm already into the first hole of the mesh. Back for me, but why didn't you? I'm going home this summer and uh, I try and buy all my stuff from the same guy. Yeah, he's a guy that I played with. His parents they own a store. Yeah, I drive by there every time I go home. So, yeah. and honestly, how much use? I mean, were we gonna play three more games? Yeah, that's just true. Okay, so I get nice and snug, right? This stick is shaping up to have quite a bit of width. You got a low pocket, a V couple of twisty shooters. Now if you want less whip, you can do a wrap around shooting string. Okay? That's what your twisty shooter looks like. I'm gonna put a wrap around above it so you can see the difference. Okay, for the wrap around, we're gonna again lock it off on the sidewall string, come up through the bottom, and we're just gonna lay a length of string across the top. Okay? Go down through the matching hole on the opposite side. Bring it back up under the sidewall. Okay, see where that's gone on the video? Now, I like to put my hand inside and pull it just about where I want it to sit, and then I start the wrap around. Okay, depending on your spacing, you pick your holes, but it's got to be consistent all the way across. This one is worth the time to make sure it looks pretty. So make sure your lace is always lying flat. Always going down out the same space. Looks like I've run out of string, but I've left this pretty loose. You just go back, snug it up all the way along, and get quite a bit more shooting lengths out of there. There we go, and just tie that off. Snug, not tight. Don't need to choke it. There we go. All right, there's two different kinds of shooters. All right. It's okay to mix them up if it feels good. It doesn't look great, but it's a cross. It's not a beauty show. Okay? Now, for this one, I'm generally going to put a nylon right across the top. Nylon's just going to give it a little bit of snap right towards the end. And I think for this, I should have a piece long enough. I definitely do. Ooh, 
just do we'll do a little bit of recycling here. We're gonna recycle two strings, we're almost short enough. Right? I'm just gonna put a loop knot to tie them together. Okay, now all you do is just bow it up. And that'll make sure it come out nice and even on the other side. Nice and tight. Now for my nylons, I definitely like to use the side wall of plastic. And I'm just gonna do a crisscross twisty on this one. Side, make sure it's snug enough that you got some bite. Now when I say bite, it just means when you press up here, it's the string holding your fingers, not the mesh. Right? If your shooters are too loose, you're not going to get anything off of them. It doesn't need to be much, just a pinch. You pull it just a little tighter than that and do the same knot as the other side. Lace one through. Pull it nice and tight and clean. There we go. A little extra. Let's get the scissors back from you. There we go. And a little lighter. Burn those ends off so don't. There we go. We got a stick. All we need is something to put it on. You got a screw to put in there? No. You got a screwdriver. Steal one out of uh, one of my sticks if you want. Okay, you got some tape wrapped around there. What do you need? I'll put a little bit of that tape. 